Um, so that's that's the first time I've done that, and that's that's kind of cool. I think I think I might do more with cameras in the future. I, I think it's it's quite interesting to see that. Um, uh, input wise, uh, it's pretty straightforward. I've already kind of spoken about this and how the input works. It just drags along, and then uh, we've got a kind of smoothing function in here. So when you do drag the when you do drag the crosshairs, there is a slight smoothing damp, like an acceleration and deceleration. Um, and that's that's pretty easy to achieve inside of Unity. There's a function included in this called uh, where is it? Let me just find it. So it's this one here, math f dot smooth damp. A smooth damp has like a, a smoothing arc to it, uh, acceleration, decelera deceleration, or inertia. Um, so that's a really nice function to use for things like menu systems as well. If you want that to gradually move along, or if you want something to tick up. Um, uh, over a specified amount of time. For example, if you want a counter to go from zero to 1,000 and you want it to take one second, but you want it to accelerate a little bit and then decelerate a little bit as it hits 1,000, then smooth damp is the function to use. Uh, and I've used that before when, when using counters. So that's pretty. That's a pretty nice function to have. Um, I'm trying to think of the other updates that I would like to talk about now. Uh, I think the big one which I... Uh, the next big scene was this one here, is the shop scene. Um, so as you can see in the bottom scene down here, I'll just I'll just make this bigger a little bit so you can see. Um, this is pretty much it. Uh, it's just the camera over here on the right hand side, and then all of these are just text objects, 3D text objects. Um, and I've made these as separate text objects in the scene, and that's basically because it's a little bit easier to handle things that way. Usually, you can in a script you can put a text object in the game, and then you can define what that text says from inside a script. But for me, I think it's, it's a little bit easier to just drag in, uh, you know, have these as separate objects and then I can move them wherever I want. That's a little bit easier. Um, these are just basic uh, 2D objects, 2D textures, these guns here. Uh, and they're just, they're just on a plane. Um, so in Photoshop, these were built and then basically black just blacked out and then uh, cleaned up a little bit so that, it, that there wasn't too many small details. This one still has a bit of small detail. Like you can see all these holes here, but it looks okay. It's not. It's not a major, major uh, issue at all. Um, what I might have to do is actually res these up for, because when they're being played on an on an iPad, they're going to be looking a little bit bitty, a little bit pixelated. So I actually have. I'm going to try this out on the iPad later. Um, these equipped buttons here, this buy and equip buttons, these are just separate text objects as well that actually have a, a border to the back of them. So let me just go to weapons objects, uh, sniper rifle two, so the buy text object. So that red, that red part in the background, that's just that's just a box on its own. Um, And then what we're doing is basically the images itself has has a its own collider. So you can see this this green box here. So whenever the player taps on like this area or this area or this area, something will happen. So what we're doing is just um, if if the player taps on the second rifle, what it'll do is it'll check to see if has this been unlocked, yes or no. Uh, has the player paid to unlock this, yes or no. If they haven't, then show the uh, the purchase pop up. So iPhone is the first platform that we're targeting, so what it does is it'll pop up the, the native iPhone pop up, that's the blue kind of rounded square one, and say, hey, you know, this, uh, would you like to purchase this, this weapon for X amount? Uh, and if the player has already purchased it, then it'll simply swap the equipped sign from the first one to the second one. So I'll just show you this now since we're, we're in this scene. For um, for the in-app purchases, anybody who's doing um, in-app purchases on iPhone for the first time, that can it can be a little bit complicated. Um, I remember when I first tried to do this, and um, the the walkthrough was okay. Actually, it wasn't too bad. Um, I use I use plugins from a company called Prime Three One dot com, Prime Thirty One. Um, totally excellent, excellent plugins. I, I definitely recommend them, and the support is great as well. And it makes things a lot faster. It means that I don't have to dip into Xcode or dip into, say, Android native JavaScript in order to do an in-app purchase. They just plug directly into Unity, and then Unity builds and it 
builds all of that stuff inside of uh, Xcode for you. Uh, and then all you have to do inside of Unity is just make the, the function calls like here. Uh, for example, store kit binding, which is the, uh, the in-app purchase system. Can it make payments? If it's true, that means yes. Then uh, request the product data and that gets the data from, from the iTunes store, which de depending on the string that you've put in there, uh, depending on the name of the product. And then try to purchase the product. Um, if you can't, then it'll just cancel out and say, sorry, no. Um, and this store kit event, event listener here is basically, this is called if the purchase is successful or if, uh, or if there's any kind of problem. So, for example, if the player does purchase the second weapon, then this, this is called. We check which product ID it is, in this case it's the second rifle, uh, and then we unlock it here with the player prefs, we give the player an alert, um, and then we just set the set the gun grade so that in the scene it, it looks like it now appears as the second gun is equipped. And this one just basically updates the, the boxes, so it updates the buy box, the equipped box, so that it moves down to the second one. So, you know, this is this is um this was a little bit complicated when I first did it. In, the, in fact, the first game that we released, I didn't have any in-app purchases inside, just because it was it was a little bit complicated. We had ads in there. Um, it was kind of the first time I was picking up Unity as well, and so I didn't want to go too complicated, or I'd, I'd be working on the game forever, and I wouldn't actually get it out. Uh, but a lot of this now is, you know, it's it's kind of copy and pasted from other projects. Uh, you know, and definitely do that as much as you can with your projects, especially from an indie standpoint. But you know, also also from a, a larger company standpoint as well, it's always it's always good to reuse assets or reuse code or something like that. Um, and I do that quite a lot here. There's the the scenes are all sort of copied over from other projects and then stripped out and then just put in again. So for example, this native scripts folder here that contains all of these objects. This was from these are from our other X series games, um, and so I've just included them. I've just copied the scene over. Just copied it example and then I copied it straight over and then just stripped away the things that I don't need and then kept the stuff that I do need. So, you know, production now becomes a lot faster just because I can reuse a lot of this code that are in all of these other scripts from the other games as well. So, uh, but definitely I encourage you guys to do that. Always reuse code. That saves a lot of time and a lot of effort really. And usually a lot of headaches as well. It'll, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll sleep better at night. So, but anyway, guys, so, you know, that's, uh, I'm going to leave this video here and I'm going to follow up with everybody later. But, um, you know, again, always please leave comments down below. Please subscribe to the channel. Uh, this is a developer diary video. Again, just mentioning that it's not a tutorial, but we're going to continue to do other tutorials. We're, we're, I'll be finishing one soon, which is called Pong for Unity. Um, so please check that one out as well. And if you have any requests for tutorials, any anything that you've seen in the features here of Clear Shooting Sniper X, or any other features that you see in other games that you perhaps want to know a little bit more about, then please let me know, and that kind of helps us to direct the tutorials a little bit. So but anyway, for that, for now, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna tune off and then uh, catch up with everybody soon. Okay, bye bye.